got it. Hit us up. Most of us remember MTV's Pimp My Ride from the 2000s as the show that turned hoopties into extremely customized sports cars in a matter of five days, and the car owner lived happily ever after. Or at least that's what us viewers thought. From allegations of fat shaming and mechanical issues, here's what really went down with the contestants on Pimp My Ride. Right. Pimp My Ride made its debut on MTV in 2004 and ran for six seasons until 2007. The show was hosted by rapper Exhibit, and each episode consisted of giving cars makeovers with outrageous and unnecessary upgrades that matched the owner's personality and personal interests. The episodes were only 30 minutes, but in that time frame, you were given a tour of the hoopty, saw the customizing process, and witnessed the big reveal to the car owners. But after the show stopped airing, the contestants started opening up about their experiences on the show. A few years after the show ended, a contestant named Justin said in a Q&A on Reddit that it actually took five months to complete the car. The cars would be in the shop for six or seven months and the contestants had to rent cars at their own expense. Some contestants had a hard time renting vehicles because of their ages. The cars appeared to be in the shop for a few days, but in reality, no car could be upgraded that much in such a short amount of time, especially when parts had to be ordered. In 2015, the Huffington Post interviewed three of the contestants, including Justin, and they all made surprising allegations. When the show opens, it follows the backstories of the car owners. The audition tapes and backstories of the contestants were either made up or exaggerated. A 25-year-old contestant named Brooke said that the producers told her to say that she was actually 22 years old and was a movie fanatic in her fake audition tape where she begged to have her car pimped. So please, MTV, pimp my ride. Brooke also said that they didn't even use her real home in the scene where Exhibit showed up to surprise her. MTV allegedly rented houses for the show and the contestants were supposed to wait inside for the knock, then open and be surprised. Seth, a heavy set contestant, said that the producers mocked his weight and dumped bags of candy in his car and told him to say that he kept candy in case he got hungry. As you can see, I like to have some candies every once in a while. You never really know when you want to have a snack. They even installed a cotton candy machine in his car once they upgraded it. Another contestant named Jake says that the producers threw a bunch of cigarette butts in the car once he mentioned that his grandmother smoked in it. Is the cigarette butts you smoke? No, uh, grandma did. Jake also alleged that a producer suggested breaking up with his girlfriend or leaving her off the show to go with the storyline of him being lonely because of how his car looked. Justin said that they added aircraft remover to help with the paint removal and made the bumper look like it was falling off. I was gonna get picked. I totally trust Exhibit with my car. They'll take care of me. Although viewers saw Exhibit driving away with the contestants' cars, the cars, or at least some of them, got towed to the shop. A lot of the accessories and upgrades were removed from the cars after taping, and some of the electronics just simply didn't work. TV screens were almost always installed into vehicles on Pimp My Ride. Seth told Huffington Post that the TV screens did not work after the show and the LED lights mounted on the seats were warming up so badly that they couldn't be left on. The cotton candy machine installed in his car didn't have a dome attached, causing the cotton candy strands to fly everywhere. His gull wing doors were also taken off because the pistons that lifted them did not leave space for rear seat belts. Contestant Justin had a pop-up champagne contraption and a drive-in theater added to his car, but it was removed after the filming. According to one of the show's producers, Larry Hochberg, the removals were done for safety. He said, Sometimes we did things for safety reasons that the kids on the show interpreted as us taking away some items. He gave an example where 24-inch spinner rims on a 1977 Cutlass would look amazing for television, but out of abundance of caution, they'd end up switching up the spinners to 20s for daily driving. The reactions to the car reveals were also faked. According to Jake, 
The producers had a long 10 minute talk with him just to make him more excited because he wasn't enthusiastic enough when he saw his car. He said, I remember this very clearly. Big Dane, very big dude. He like puts his arm around my shoulder, kind of walks me around the shop for like 10 minutes and he's like, listen, we put a lot of work into this. We expect you to be a little more fucking enthusiastic. Contestant Justin also made the same claims. Even though those cars had a bunch of additions and upgrades, important parts of the cars weren't included in those additions. Apparently, the mechanical functionality of the cars wasn't given much attention in the pimping process. Seth says that he had to buy an engine a month later. He said, for the most part, it needed a lot of work done to make it a functioning regular driver which they did not do. They added a lot of extra weight, but didn't adjust the suspension to compensate, so it felt like I was in a boat. And every time I hit a bump, the car would bottom out and the tires would scrape inside the wheel well. Jake, on the other hand, said that they installed a fake exhaust pipe to fake the sound of the car when he actually needed a muffler. He sold the car a month later. As for Justin, after expensive mechanical work, the car would catch on fire a few years later. Larry Hochberg says, It's not accurate to say that we didn't work on the mechanics of the car and that the contestants on the show had a misconception of what had happened with their vehicles. As he explained to Huffington Post, some of the cars were so old and rusted that they would have mechanical issues no matter how much work you put into them. And the production team and the car shops worked their butts off to get parts for these cars. The cast and director of the show says that they never set out to fix mechanical issues in the cars in the first place. But I'd like to note that most of the contestants interviewed by Huffington Post did say that they enjoyed their experiences on the show and missed their cars once they got rid of them. One of them said, Before then, I was just a kid. I was shy. I was really shy. He said, And then, it's sad to say, but being on the show gave me some confidence and it made me the person I am today. I'm the most outgoing person you ever met. The show's producer, Larry Hochberg, also says he enjoyed working with them, saying, there were so many great kids on the show and it was fun to give the cards to all of them. But guys, no matter how you cut it, there's always gonna be some type of scripting on reality television. I can't even say I'm surprised about all of these allegations. What do you guys think? Go ahead and let me know your thoughts in the comment section and make sure you like this video and subscribe for more content.